So a few months ago you might have seen that I released this video on my Facebook page. Dear wandering soul, I think I know where we've come. We're right here, where we belong. We are here. We are home. A drone clip which I released from my trip to the Scottish Highlands but I got a lot of compliments for how it looked and how cinematic it all felt so today I'm going to share with you two secrets or industry secrets that maybe a lot of you who are not involved in the filmmaking scene or are just beginning don't understand or realise the importance of how much they affect the mood and the atmosphere of your productions and that is sound design and colour grading. These two factors, of course there are many many others but maybe for a different video, um, dramatically, dramatically impact the mood, the feel, the atmosphere um, of your film or of your video or of your, of your picture even um, and how someone feels when they are watching what you have produced. Directors in Hollywood and I think 99% of what you watch out there in some way shape or form has taken into account colour grading and sound design to convey uh, a particular style, um, a tone in the film, a mood. Um, does the director want you to feel happy and cheery or sad and sombre or you know at the edge of your seat? This is done uh, primarily uh, through things like colour grading and sound design, which I've also used in this clip. So for example, right, the, the Harry Potter films. Um, and by the way, just to let you know, if you start watching me, get used to lots more Harry Potter references. So for example, the uh, first Harry Potter film um, looks very young, like a kid's movie. It's very kind of uh, joyous and magical. And then the last couple start to get very dark and, and serious. And a large proportion of that is down to the fact that the colour and the tone in the film is very different. The palette chosen is different. And that makes you realise that, whoa, it's going down. Voldemort's back in town. Okay, that was, that was very cheesy. <laughs> and that's the beauty of filmmaking and cinema is that if you were to give 10 different directors or filmmakers the exact same camera, the exact same lens and the exact same scene, you'll get 10 different outcomes depending on that uh, director's and that editor's particular style and how they want you to feel when you watch that, right? And you're thinking, well, I'm not a cinematographer. I don't have these incredible expensive cameras and this fancy equipment to make that happen. Actually, you can achieve that on consumer level cameras. Even your phone these days can achieve this if you know what to do. And we'll talk about that in a separate tutorial. But for example, here's what I did um, in my video to actually change the color uh, or change the mood, for example, at every scene. You'll notice that actually the um, before is a very flat, desaturated, almost disgusting looking colour, right? Um, and then afterwards, once I applied the colour correction and then applied the colour grade to stylize it, it completely changes it, right? So what a lot of um, filmmakers do, or professional filmmakers, is they actually film purposefully in a very flat, desaturated, very low contrast picture profile, which you can get in some of these consumer level cameras and even your phone if you get the right app. And then on top of that, they have like a blank canvas to work with and to style that however they want to. Pretty clever, huh? Okay, so let's talk about sound design. Another thing that will literally make or break your movie. And I believe it or not, sorry to break it to you, but almost every sound that you hear apart from the audio and other kind of small sounds is not actually captured on the set. It's actually recorded separately in a studio uh, after the fact. Yeah, I know. My life is a lie. Now these guys are called Foley artists and what they'll do is these guys are professionals in making sounds in the studio to match what's happening on set. There's many reasons for this of course, it's very difficult to capture sounds as they are perfectly on set. The wind happens, some random people in the background shout while you're trying to record your video for example and a whole bunch of other complicated reasons. But in the studio, they can decide exactly what you hear. Footstep sounds. Crackling sounds. Door creaking sounds. A whole bunch of other sounds. The 
the possibilities are endless, basically. So for example, going back to my video, what you'll hear me doing is adding just very subtle atmospheric tones, right? Like the wind, for example. So let's listen. Sounds dramatic, right? And then, for example, um, just to add in some space, some birds tweeting and chirping in the background like this. Now, something that I was pretty gutted about was the fact that when I went to Glenfinnan, the Harry Potter bridge, the train wasn't running at that time. But because it was a train track, I still put a train sound effect there so that subliminally the person watching registers that. Now I'm also known to be a bit of a weirdo goofball on my Instagram and I make lots of crazy Instagram stories and here's one example of how I use the whoosh sound effects to create a more realistic looking transition in my videos. Man I am hungry! And that's the thing, when you're watching it, you don't actually notice it, but it's there. And what sound design can do is actually trick the person watching into thinking something's happened when it actually hasn't, okay? So, for example, I could just do this, but with a bit of a sound effect, I could do this, and it sounds like I'm moving really fast when actually I'm not. One more example is, we can zoom into my face like this. Or, we can zoom into my face like this. Boo! Big difference, right? And that is how sound uh, and, and music etc can really affect your productions. Okay, so that is it for this video. Just touching the tip of the iceberg and teaching you how um, the industry does it, some behind the scenes industry uh, secrets. Now, if you want me to teach this kind of stuff and how you can achieve it on your phone or on your camera, uh, let me know in the comments below if you think I should teach this on YouTube um, at a very beginner level um, that you can achieve, inshallah, to take your videos to the next level. And also I'd appreciate uh, to kind of let me know if this is something I should do, is if you head to the comments and actually click through and subscribe to my channel. If I hit a certain number of subscribers, it will let me know that I have a bit of an audience to speak to before I go and make all these videos and then it's just me like talking to a brick wall, you know? And that's kind of boring. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, salam.